Greetings Overseer and welcome to Outpost Zero. My name is Cabby and I'd like to walk you through the basics of surviving the world of Gaia. Outpost Zero is a sci-fi first person shooter with base building mechanics and elements of survival. As an AI Overseer, you are equipped with the basic tools necessary to begin constructing your corporation's first habitat in order to sustain human life for the future of mankind. Daunting task, isn't it? Well, let's help you out by walking through the tutorial. In order to get acquainted with the user interface, you'll want to go ahead and read the initial newbie training messages that allow you to open up your inventory. Uh, it will teach you how to equip your starting weapon, uh, switching between your handy tool, which is your persistent hand tool that allows you to harvest and do basic damage to just about anything. Um, you'll be able to switch with the hop bars uh, to any weapon or any item that you equip into that slide. Now as you're exploring the world of Gaia, you can check out some areas that you feel comfortable with starting your habitat. It's very important to note that you do have a few tools to help you find great locations with great resources. You are equipped with a map and you can also toggle a resource finder uh, which will indicate the location of resources both on your compass and on your map. When you open up the map resources will show up and then which you can zoom in for closer detail as towards the position of various resources. Here in this case you can see that we have found some copper, silica, Sodium, as indicated by the map, which is in the detection zone of the resource finder. Some of the basic resources that we know we're probably going to need. It's going to be iron and carbon. I know the tutorial is explaining that we need to gather 50 carbon from the native vegetation. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and check out some of these trees here, as indicated, uh, and start mining them. You can either use your handy tool or your basic hatchet that is given to you at the start of the game to harvest resources. And as soon as you start gathering, you'll be able to see how much you've gathered as you harvest those resources. We're checking out the map here and we've noticed that it started raining. There are various weather conditions that you'll want to look out for. And in this case, if you open up the map, uh, we can tell that there is a direct lightning storm that is happening in another grid portion of the map that is fortunately not affecting us right now. So we're in the clear. Seems we've gathered enough uh, carbon uh, to continue to the tutorial and we'll be able to start laying out are foundations. Now foundations uh, are the basic building blocks uh, to building up your colony or your base. Now if at any point in time you run out of energy uh, you'll be able to find these energy resources uh, and energy rocks out in the world and you can get a quick recharge out of them. Now the basic uh, the, the basic uh, health and energy system uh, is what the player relies on. On the bottom left, the red bar indicates uh, your health. The blue bar indicates your shield. And the orange bar, of course, indicates your energy. Being an AI overseer, you're going to require energy as well as your base, as well as your, your AI bots that you craft in the future. Uh, opening up our menu, uh, we're going to go ahead and start laying out some foundations. In our case, we're going we're gonna to lay out four foundations uh, to satisfy the requirements of the tutorial. Uh, but if you s tab through the various uh, build menu, you can see the various recipes here. Uh, there are uh, craftables for uh, uh, crafting, uh, defense structures, resources, um, and of course, basic uh, base building 
uh, features here. So we're going to go ahead and build four blocks here. And with our handy tool, we're going to go ahead and complete building the foundations. Now the way the building system works is you have uh, frames that you can place. At any time if you want to cancel it, you can hit Q and it'll cancel the building process so you don't have to commit those resources immediately. The framing system was designed in order to allow players uh, to design their bases and to allow their bots uh, to build uh, and complete structures based off of the framing system. Now in order to lay claim to a t territory and begin uh, setting your respawn point, you're going to want to build a command center. The command center is basically the heart and soul of your base. Now by searching out, we're going to go ahead and harvest iron. Iron is going to be required for uh, building uh, various structures. Uh, it is the basic resource required for most structure pieces. You'll want to have plenty of access to iron. And there will be tools that allow you to harvest iron at greater yields later on in the game. Now what we're going to be crafting here uh, we're going to be crafting a furnace. A furnace is going to allow us to burn carbon, uh, which provides power for the base. Now once again, as I mentioned before, energy is the sustenance uh, in which your base and your AI bots rely on. Uh, so having ample amounts of energy uh, for your base and yourself is going to be quite important. You can open up the inventory, simply right click and transfer carbon into it and as you can see the steam furnace has now turned on and is producing power. Now the next structure that we're going to build is a charging station. The charging station is going to allow you and your bots to recharge. Uh, once again, if you take a look at the bottom left, my energy is currently at 735. By building the charging station, I'll be able to provide a permanent structure that as long as it's powered uh, will recharge uh, recharge my character here so now that we're locked in and recharging you can see that our energy values are going back up the bottom left now this is a dynamic uh, structure so uh, by that I mean if you place and have ample amounts of energy you will recharge faster so in our case, we have one steam furnace. If we were to build two, for example, or upgrade that steam furnace to tier two, we would be able to charge at a much faster rate. These are things to keep in mind when designing your base and allowing plenty of room and opportunity to upgrade those stations. The next structure that we're gonna build is the basics to expanding. Uh, you're gonna rely on a lot of help and Building a robotics factory is going to be the first step to that. The robotics factory uh, allows you to craft bots. In our case, the first initial bot that you can create is an autonomous drone. The drone does basic commands that allow you to harvest, build, craft, repair, haul, and do other various tasks that you will need in order to expand and thrive in the world of Gaia. Here in our case, we have built our first drone and we can immediately access its command menu by hitting Q and we're gonna go ahead and have our drone here, Drone Yi, uh, start building for us. Now if you take a look at him, he's immediately accepted the order and he's gonna go ahead and start building. Now there are several upgrades and several factors and st stats to the drones and bots in the future that you can upgrade that improve uh, their efficiency in building and various tasks that you assign them to. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, since we've been provided a extra bot in our inventory we're going to spawn a second drone and we're going to go ahead and have drone Nathan harvest. So now we've got one drone 
that is building and we got another drone that's going to be harvesting allowing me to do other things like setting up frames for the rest of the base harvesting other various resources hunting or upgrading structures Now something that's important to know is that uh, th you are not alone uh, in Gaia and in our case we've just received a transmission uh, from a pirate faction. Uh, there are various rebel pirates, um, pirate bots that, uh, that are basically defectors uh, that obviously have a different agenda in mind. They will raid and attack your base uh, so you have to be prepared to defend against them. Uh, now we're looking at a drop drop ship uh, that seems to be dropping off uh, two AI bots that uh, are two pirate bots that are going to be attacking the base. Uh, so this is our first wave and uh, we should be able to take them out relatively easily. Uh, now keep in mind we don't want them attacking our command structure but we have walls in place uh, with our hatchet. I should be able to take these guys out uh, fairly quickly. Now, taking out both of them, um, I'm able to loot them up real quick. See what they got here. We got some copper off of this guy. It looks like Mr. Pirate Soldier David has some iron. Uh, so uh, we got some uh, some cheap resources from our first little wave of pirates. But keep in mind, as you progress, uh, pirate attacks will grow stronger. Uh, there will be uh, different weapons that they'll use. They'll they'll be attacking in greater uh, greater numbers and greater strength uh, in them in at themselves too. In order to uh, increase uh, the yield and or increase the income of various resources, uh, you can plant various harvesters. Uh, in this case, we're going to be setting up uh, uh, a mining trail. Um, if you any nodes that you find, you can set up a drill over it, uh, and it will passively uh, generate and uh, produce uh, iron over time, in which you can come back or have your bots come back and collect those resources and bring them back to the base. In order for the miner to be powered, we're going to go ahead and connect our power. Uh, from the main base over to the miner by establishing a power pylon. Uh, the green area indicates uh, the the region uh, in which uh, power will reach. Uh, now we've just been attacked by a burrow weaver uh, soldier. Now the, the wildlife uh, can be very very aggressive. There are various wildlife that are both neutral, um, pa you know, passive and, uh, and aggressive as well. Um, and they have different levels, so uh, some of these creatures could be quite strong, some of them uh, very weak. Uh, that is that is something to keep in mind when you're exploring and defending your base. What can I do for you? We're going to set up a machine shop. A machine shop here uh, will allow us to create some basic kits and tools. Um, we're going to require some uh, basic ammunition. Uh, for our small turrets uh, here you can see nine millimeter bullet you can see repair packs energy packs shield boosters uh, and other various uh, ammunition now that we have all the resources that we need um, we're also going to create a storage container a storage container is good to have um, your bots will actually make use of the storage containers uh, for instance if you have a drone that is out harvesting uh, the drone will will fill up its inventory, come back and drop off its uh, drop off its inventory into the storage container, freeing up freeing up room in its inventory, uh, so that it can go back out to its task and collect more resources. Now here we are. We're placing uh, small turrets around the base. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just place two: one on this side, one on the other side, and uh, that should allow us. Um, to cover at least uh, this back three quarters section of the base. Now, as you can see, 
Uh, both of our small turrets are built and powered. All we need to do is make sure that the turrets do have ammunition uh, in its inventory, otherwise it will not fire. So we're going to start crafting the 9mm bullets over at our machine shop. Now you can always set these to repeat and if you have a drone or a bot set to craft, if they have those resources required uh, for whatever task is assigned uh, at the structure, they'll be able to repeat and complete those tasks. So in this case, uh, if a bot had sulfur, uh, it would be able to constantly craft 9mm ammo uh, at the machine shop. So here we are, we're going to go ahead and split a stack of 9mm. We're going to feed it into the small turrets here, dropping 40 in each. Now the, the turrets are now active, and this turret here is actually engaging uh, with, with a spider over there. So it's going to go ahead and clear that dangerous wildlife for us. It's just taking out that spider. We're going to go over there and go ahead and loot it. It does have various range, uh, various turrets uh, do have various range uh, as well as different uh, weapon type turrets. Uh, of course they, uh, they will have different energy needs uh, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. If you're running on two steam furnaces probably wouldn't be a wise idea to, to have four or more uh, turrets running obviously or, or rocket turrets for example. As we take a look at the storage container that we built earlier, you can you can already see there's been some resources that's been deposited uh, by our drone that's been doing a lot of harvesting. Uh, it's really nice because we don't have to pay attention to them uh, too much. Just allow them to work and and allow them to drop off supplies over in the storage box. Now we've just crafted a, an equipment workbench. Equipment uh, workbenches will allow you to craft uh, various uh, various armor. Now. The important thing to know about the armor is that they all have stats uh, and there's various armor types uh, that are fitting for different tasks. So there's combat, uh, there's resource gathering, things like that. So those are, those are some stats and things to keep in mind uh, when building out uh, armor for, for you and your bots. You'll want to explore the different crafting recipes. Uh, for instance, if you have a drone that's out harvesting, if he gets low on energy, he's going to have to come back and recharge at your charging station. In order for them to be a little bit more efficient, for example, you can create an energy pack. Creating an energy pack here will allow us to go ahead and, and transfer the energy pack over into the uh, drone's inventory. And if his energy falls below a certain threshold, he will automatically use that energy pack. So we're going to go ahead and look for our little guy over here, Drone Yi. Here he is on the map. Their positions are always indicated on the map, which is nice. So we can easily find them. He's around here somewhere. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Let's go ahead and drop, drop off an energy pack here. And he's already instantly used it. Uh, he's... See, he was below uh, half energy, he's already instantly used it. Uh, so that's a great example of what you can do. Uh, so that's basically it for the basic tutorial. We've completed our base. Uh, it's a very, very simple base uh, for demonstration, obviously. It's a one-story base. Uh, fully sealed with two doors, two turrets, a power pylon, a mining drill. Uh, fully capped off uh, with ceilings and two drones that are obviously uh, our current workforce. Uh, now as you spend more time in the game you can expand and grow. Eventually you can craft uh, drone bots that are humanoids like yourself. Equip them with armor. They'll be more efficient. They'll have different weapons that you can equip them with. Um, there will be uh, waves of uh, pirates that you'll want to look out for. Dangerous wildlife that yield very, very rare resources uh, and as well as other players. Now you're going to have to keep in mind 
uh, that not every player out there represents a friendly corporation. They could be friend or they can be foe. But either way, uh, it's up to you uh, to decide your diplomatic resolution. So good luck and stay safe.